Hello everyone, True Zero Emissions here. So we're here at uh, Griffith Park. Well, we're in the area. And um, I was in the park earlier. Now I'm following these cyclists, trying to see where they're going. Because I feel like cyclists have the great paths, like really good ones. And uh, they probably know I'm following them because they, sometimes they have mirrors like on my helmet or they could have it lit on my handlebar or something. And if they ask me any questions, I'll just say, you know, cyclists have the greatest paths and I just wanted to see where you guys are going. Okay, there is a car coming. Hopefully we can both fit through here. Okay, that worked out good, thank goodness. Yeah, see, this is a beautiful path, this road. And I didn't know about this. I haven't been up here. I haven't gone on this before. Yeah, so if you want a low, uh, look how this car pulled over for the cyclist. That was really nice. That's, that's etiquette right there. That's sophistication. That's all the good things you can imagine. Polite society, right? I mean, that's just what I sense. Is when someone can pull over and say, I'm going to make space for you. I'm going to share this road with you. Now remember, bicycles were here before automobiles, right? Bicycles were here before the automobile, before the gasoline-powered automobile. We had bicycles, if I recall correctly. Bicycles were way before, if I recall correctly, right? Now, I have no idea where these guys are going. Um, So to me, it makes sense that we would have bike paths as many as we have roads. But we don't. Not that I see. I do see some bike paths, and I see more and more, and more than I realized we had, which is wonderful. But I still feel like we need more bike paths, right? Micromobility bike lanes and cities are building them and um, <clears throat> but we I don't think we could have too much right I don't think we could have too many of the protected bike lanes like in this road that would be putting these cars out here in the bike lane against the sidewalk with a barrier there right or maybe not a barrier maybe the car acts as a barrier right but when you move that bike path away from these moving cars out here that's a very good design and there's a lot of ways that the oh where are they going now are they going is there another path that would be fun oh my gosh is this a bike path I don't believe it it might not be but well it's at least a little one a little path I never knew about this Oh, it's short. It's a short path. I don't know where they're going right now. They all saw me, I think. Hopefully they don't get upset that I'm following. <laughs> oh, they're going fast. I'm looking in my mirror, I don't see anybody next to me. They might be going to the LA River bike path. Which which is a nice bike path, right? They're gonna ride in the street. I don't really want to ride in the street. I'm gonna go on the sidewalk. That's one thing about cyclists is that I mean I know that they get the lane, the whole lane. Um, but, you know, so many cyclists get hit. Oh no. I see what's happening here. I'm getting, I'm moving away from the, the road here. Yeah, I think the road is better to stay in the road, actually. I probably should just ride with them. This is a dangerous crossing right here because cars can be coming through here. Is there a car coming right now? No? Okay. <laughs> I 
I do like how the laws protect bike cyclists on the bike on the uh, roads to um, to ride to get the full lane access. This fence right here to my right needs to be much higher, at least twice the height. That makes no sense at all to me, to be that low. Yeah, they're going to the LA River bike path. I think that's what this is called, LA River bike path. They might be going to the, um, looks clear behind me. They might be going to the, uh, there's a bike, there's a bike uh, repair shop and, and cafe on this path here. Now I've also been told that this path goes to, I didn't see this guy coming right here. Gosh, I'm glad I, I didn't go in the opposite lane. I just wasn't paying attention. I think well, maybe I'm a little tired or something. Uh, Cause I was gonna just start going like, you know, carving or swerving through these lines right here and uh, I look up and there's a bike coming maybe I'll just do my carving in, in my lane it's safer instead of using those lines in the middle I've been told that this path does continue all the way to the beach I just don't know how people do it I haven't figured that out if I had enough range I would like to take all these paths and ideally I would have this did they disappear no they're up there ideally I would have this is a crossing here intersection ideally I would have um, this unicycle I think but with some kind of onboard charger lightweight right Don Smith used to talk about uh, going back to, to those that conversation from previous videos Don Smith which is Donald Lee Smith which is the life's work is in his book uh, that Rick Friedrich put Rick Friedrich put together YouTube channel Rick Friedrich uh, the magnetic resonance energy crafting systematic index so just think about the words of that magnetic resonance okay what is magnetic resonance what is that I, I think of uh, John Searle's work, right? What is energy crafting? I better catch up to these guys. They're way up there. See, I can't even keep up with these cyclists. These guys are quick. It's windy right now, too. It's blowing me around. And I think on two wheels, there is more stability um, when it's windy if I just focus just on the wind part. So I was reading, happily, reading that the Lynx is, because I was reading the Sherman L has a, uh, a sense, a sense, what is it called? A um, hall sensor safety system. Now, I don't know the words they used for that, but the hall sensor safety system is, I think if there's a hall sensor failure, we won't get a cutout, like we won't go flying off the unicycle, right? Because we can get really hurt like that. And I thought that was just the Sherman L, and I read that, I read this morning that the Sherman L and the Lynx, excuse me, both have that capability. And it sounds like the Lynx and the Sherman L are like identical in almost every way except that the Sherman L has the greater battery capacity but still has the good cells in it that the Lynx has. And I'll tell you something, people talk about mind blow, they go, my mind is blown, right? Everyone that learns I can charge, look at this with two front wheels. That had two front wheels, that was cool. Anyone, what was I saying, I lost my train of thought, that totally took my mind. Uh, my attention and my thoughts. What was I saying? Uh, oh, hall sensors. 
hall sensors. What else was I saying? Anyway, if the hall sensors fail on the Lynx or the Sherman L, it will still work. And instead of throwing us off the electric unicycle, that's very, very important. I like that. It's reassuring. It makes me feel much safer. Right? I'm not pushing this to the edge of how fast it can go. But um, knowing that if something goes wrong with the hall sensor, which is something that does happen sometimes on electric motors, it's not going to have a, what I'll call a catastrophic failure, which is what I'll refer to as the electric unicycle um, basically malfunctioning and then we go flying flying off the electric unicycle, right? So it's nice to know that the uh, the Sherman L and the Lynx are, are really, really good. That's why I bought it too. That's why I bought the Lynx was because it's it's said to be the best. But if you want more battery, you got the Sherman L. You have the choice of the Sherman L. And um, I haven't ridden the Sherman L. I've seen it. Oh, and I think I was saying ideally I would have a lightweight like Don Smith type charger. What I mean is Don could have like a megawatt, okay, megawatts, like millions of watt hours power system, like a charger, the size of your palm, that fitting in the palm of your hand, very light, right? Where are these systems? People are building them in their garages, in their houses, in their homes. You know, if you master Don Smith's systems and you study everything Tom Bearden was doing and John Bedini was doing and just study all the great masters of energy. And um, you know, people that are pre-teens, here's the place I was talking about the bicycle. Oh no, this is something else. Yeah, those guys stopped there. I was hoping they were going to go further, like to the other path that people talk about. Like, there's supposed to be some other path over here. Um, I've tried to do it before where I put my map on bicycle and I said go to the beach. And I was hoping to for it to take me to the bike paths. Oh, these guys are trimming the trees. Look. Hi. You guys are trimming, the, cleaning the path up. That's so awesome. How often do you guys do that? Uh, every day. Really? We're the River Rangers program. What is it called? The River, LA River Rangers program. So it's like a job, right? It's yeah. a paid job? Okay. Do you happen to know if this path continues to the beach somehow? Somewhere? I'm not sure. Because people have told me that there's paths to get to the beach. I just don't know where it picks up again. Because this one ends up there, right? I think so, yeah. Okay. Well, that's so awesome that you guys are maintaining this. Do you know who maintains like the bumps in the road? Is that separate? That's separate. Because we're, we're just in charge of cleaning up the mess here. Okay. How would I find out? You'd have to ask my supervisor, but he's in a different location. I think he's up ahead. Oh, okay. You know his name? Mark. Mark? Uh -huh. He has a white helmet. Okay. And what, what do I tell him your name is? Jetsabel. So I'll say Jessica told me to talk to you. Jetsabel. Huh? Jetsabel. Jetsabel? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm really happy you guys maintain this. See, there's another bike path called the um, the Chandler bike path or the orange line, the orange line bike path. And the trees grow down. Yeah. And even when they trim it, they don't trim it high enough. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I don't know who to talk to. Uh, we would usually take care of that, but we go from location to location. So we have to finish up one area before we go see what it looks like. Oh. And it might be out of our range. So how do I find out what your range are? Like, how do I You'd get... have to ask our supervisor. He's going to know everything? Okay, and his name is Mark? Mark. Okay, I'll talk to Mark. Okay. Thank you so much, and thank you guys for what you do. Thank you. You're doing great work. Okay, thank you. Okay. That's a lot of cleaning there. She said they'd work here every day. Okay, we're gonna look for Mark at a different location. It sounds like she said they work on the orange. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Can you imagine if today 
we actually find the people that actually do the work that, that clean the that maintain the orange line um, bike path right gosh wouldn't that be great now you see how many people walk run on the bike path right on the lane now the walking lane I think is on the right but I could see why they're not using that because it's so small right but they like to go right in the middle, right? Okay, let's see if we could see Mark. I'm gonna start a new video here. I think the lady said her name was Jetsika. Jetsika, I'm not sure. I, couldn't, I have an earplug in my right ear. My left ear doesn't have an earplug in it, but she was on the right, right side, so I couldn't hear her that good. Okay, now I hope I see Mark and that team up here, I hope. Uh, Okay, we're going to start a new video. We'll see you in a few seconds. True Zero Emissions signing off for the moment. See you soon. Stop recording.